how do you adopt that mindset when you're so used to being hard on yourself? Uh, yeah, so there's um, a couple easy ways, and then I can also lead a practice if you're interested mm-hmm. in that. So a couple easy ways is just to ask yourself, what I say to a friend who was in a similar situation, what I'm saying to myself right now, you know, you could ask with, hmm, no. And also, what would be the impact on my friend if I said to her, you know, you stupid, lazy idiot, something like that? Probably not a positive one. And that not very positive effect is also happening on myself. What would I say to my friend that would be really helpful, truly helpful? Doesn't mean necessarily lying to your friend, telling your friend, you know, straight, but in a kind way. That's probably going to be the most helpful thing. You could try that with yourself. And so again, using the template of what we've already developed over um, the years, which is how to be supportive and kind to others and then turning it inward. But there's another practice I like to call the self-compassion break, uh, which I can actually lead if, if you want me to. Yes, let's do it. Okay. So this is a practice where um, we actually intentionally call in the three components of self-compassion, which again is kind of mindfulness of our suffering, common humanity, remembering that we aren't alone, and then bringing in some words of kindness and support. Do you want me to leave? Yes, <laughs> let's do it. Okay. All right. If you want, you can close okay. your eyes just to kind of go inward. All right. So just uh, taking a moment, just start by settling into your body because we've just been talking a lot. So taking a moment to just feel your own body being present here right now. And then I'd invite you Um, Eileen or anyone else who is listening to think about a problem you're having in your life, some challenge or difficulty. Uh, Maybe you're feeling bad about yourself for something. Maybe you made a mistake or did something you regret. Or maybe you're facing a relationship challenge or a work challenge or maybe your health um, is having some issues. So please don't choose something that's really overwhelming because you won't be able to focus on the practice if you're too distressed, but something that's that's challenging. Just call it to mind. So the first thing you want to do is become mindful and turn toward uh, the pain that's here. Right, just validating this this is hard. It's hard to experience this. It hurts. And then we also want to remind ourselves of the humanity of what we're experiencing. This happens to human beings. Right? You aren't alone. There's nothing wrong with you or abnormal about having this challenge. It's part of life. And then finally bringing in some kindness, right? Some words of uh, understanding, support, perhaps sympathy. Maybe some. you might say something to yourself like, You know, I'm so sorry you're going through this. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. I care about you. It's okay. We all make mistakes. We can learn. We can grow. And the language is really going to depend on your situation. So one thing you may want to try to do is imagine that you had a good friend in the exact same situation you are in. And then that may help um, inspire you of what you might say to be supportive and kind. And then just see if you can say something similar to yourself. Okay, and then you can open your eyes. So that's... The, the basic formula, you know, one part mindfulness, one part common humanity, one part kindness. Yeah. How was that for you? I'm curious. It was reassuring. 
especially the yeah. feeling not alone. Like you're not the only one going through this, experiencing this. And then just, just saying kind words to yourself is, it feels nice. Yeah. And it's, and it's supportive. That's the thing, you know, just think of as human infants, we are designed by evolution to thrive in the context of care and support, hopefully from our caregivers. And, you know, we, we can give that to ourselves as adults. And it, it also triggers that sense of safety and it allows you to think more clearly. And, you know, sometimes we just run away with things, imagining that the world is coming to mm-hmm. an end. I mean, some people are not that some people are facing really serious trauma, not to belittle that. But it helps put things in more perspective and just to know that we are on our own side, that we aren't an ally, not an enemy when we go into battle. I mean, think about that. Most people think that somehow cutting yourself down and being cold is going to make you stronger. It doesn't. It makes you weaker. Being your own ally, having your own back, that's what helps strengthen you and helps build emotional resilience. Mm 